got the goodness of Jesus. Right. Oh, yeah. And oh, all he's done, he's done for me. Oh, yeah. I just this morning. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about the goodness of Jesus. Oh, yeah. And oh, all he's done, he's done for me. His many blessings, his showers of blessings that continually flow upon us every day, every night. God, even in the midst of the storms of our lives, his blessings continue to overflow in our lives. And we just give God the praise, glory, 
and honor. We just want to just say thank you, God, for another opportunity to come into the house of worship another Sunday morning, a Sunday we've never seen before, a day in which we never even open our eyes to, but God be the glory that he has allowed us to into this place of worship. We worship wherever we go, but Sunday is the day that we come together and we fellowship together to just praise him together and to encourage one another. Amen. Amen. If you will stand for our call to worship, our call to worship this morning <clears throat> We'll be coming from Psalms 100, and we're going to prepare for the reading of the call to worship, and then we'll have our scripture and prayer this morning by our youth today, which uh, little Jordan Hackney will be doing our scripture, and Camille Hackney will do our prayer in that order. Amen. Amen. So Psalms 100 in the NIV is where we'll be. And it says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And that's what you're doing this morning. Amen. And it says, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. Hallelujah. We are his. We are his people the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. So I just say to you all this morning to be thankful Give God glory, give him praise, give him honor, and just rejoice Hallelujah. in his holy name. Amen? Amen. 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 As you remain standing, Jordan, you may come forth. Amen. Morning. Scripture will become from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And it reads, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am, I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets and so that a herald may run with it. Yeah. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false, though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See? He is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the right, right, righteous will live by his faith. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to see this new day of this week. Father, we thank you for today. We give this special day over to you. May we rest in your presence, bathe in your goodness, and celebrate your eternal life. This day and always. And also, Give Mika the knowledge on her sermon today. Let her speak the right words of your name, God. And bless everyone in this whole world, even those who do not have. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 
think I feel like that are sitting before us today and I thank you for you online viewers on today I pray that something will be said, read, preached song today that will give your heart a lift on today, amen amen, I want to thank our choir and our musician, Sister Lillian our tech, Deacon Hackney and our deacons Minister Mosley I want to thank you, Pastor Gooch, First Lady Gooch, for being with us today. God bless you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, thank you. Hirsch is on the door. Thank you. Prayer and the reader, thank you so very much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for praying for Mika because, see, uh, I think someone told her that she needs to say pastor, but you know what? what's in your heart is what's in your heart. So I thank you all, girls. Um, at this time is our time for our offertory uh, moment, and and we here at United Christian have three ways in which we give. If you're online or if you're here, if you're here, you can still take part in our uh, giving by way of online, which you go to the church's website, www.ucfmbc.com. Move down to the Give tab, and you will find Tidely. And that's where you're able to make your um, gifts of giving right there. And it goes in instantaneously, comes out of your account instantaneously. How about that? You don't have to worry about if the check cleared or anything about it. Or if the mail system worked, it worked right then and there. And we thank you all. Thank you all that continue to use that because it is an efficient way. And as a way also that our accountant can, can get it done at a quicker rate also. But we thank you. However you give, you're giving unto the Lord. 
So you're able to give that way. You're able to give by way of the U.S. postal system, which is United Christian Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, P.O. Box 2142, Oxford, N.C., 27565. And if you're here present and you want to give, if you don't have an envelope, the urchers will, if you just stick your hand, they'll give you one envelope. And at the end of service, when you exit out, they will allow you to put your gifts in the basket. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the gifts and the givers of those gifts on today, God. We thank you what you've allowed and what you've supplied in our barns, God. Some of them are filled and running over, God. Some are half filled and some are shaking. Some don't even have a gift to give. But God, their hearts are willing, Lord. And, and, and you said in your word that we should be cheerful givers, God, and give unto mankind, God. And we pray, Lord, that the gifts that are given will be used for, for building uh, in this earth, God, for for replenishing those that are empty, God, for making ways and, and being able to be a blessing to men, women, and boys and girls that are suffering and are going through, God, and to be able to uphold other ministries that we're attached to. God, we just pray right that you will bless your givers, God, and that will give freely and willingly, God, and they will also give cheerfully, God. And we thank you, God, that you've already blessed it, God, that wherever it goes to, God, you've already known and seen, God, what we don't even know and we can't even imagine, God. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. So with that, we are still in our somewhat abbreviated service, even though we're in the building. We thank God for every one of you. We have a time at the end when we go offline for our announcements. But currently, for those that are present, do we have any birthdays on this week coming up, coming forth uh, that we need to share? Have a birthday song sung to you? No one? Any anniversaries? Okay. All right. Then we'll move forward. So now, choir. It is in your all's capable hands to praise the Lord in the way that you know how, by way of song. And after that, I'll come back with your morning message and we'll move forward. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pity every air. One of my groans. I'm going to tell you, when you got a Lord and a Savior like our God, it's nothing but the truth to know that God is able. In the midst of the storms, in the midst of everything that goes on in this earth, God is still present. Because see, what, what the man, man want you to believe right now with all this turmoil and all this stuff that's going on, that there is no God, that God does not hear or answer our prayers. But don't you allow the trick of the enemy to fool you. Because God is real. He's going to stay real. He's forever real. And he's always seeing and knowing. But we are to believe with everything that we got. That God, hallelujah, is a keeper of our mind, body, and soul. Things don't always go the way we want. Things go away. Things happen in life. But to trust the Lord, just trust him. Mm. Thank y'all, choir. You know, the, <clears throat> the songs that y'all have sang this morning are very fine with our word on today. You heard the red word read before you. Um, and I'm going to read Habakkuk. That's just before Matthew in the Old Testament. Now, if y'all have a problem kind of finding that one. But anyway, <clears throat> Habakkuk 2 and verse 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it again. Um, but I'm going to read it in the... It's going to show up on the NIV to you online viewers. But I'm going to read this in the KJV because many of us are very familiar with this verse, but uh, especially uh, verse three. And so I want to read it into what you're familiar with, if you will stand for just a moment. So Habakkuk chapter two and verse one says, I will stand upon my watch. And set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, I mean, it may wait a little bit. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. Yeah. That's us, y'all. We got to live by our faith. Amen. 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 You may be seated. So, with that this morning, I have a simple topic, and it's called I'm Trusting God. Amen. I am trusting God. Father God, we thank you for this day, God. Oh, God, we thank you for this precious time in which we are sitting in, God. Sitting here listening for a word, God, a word from you, God, a word that will enlighten us, God, a word that will encourage us, a word that will empower us, God, and a word that will bring, bring clarity to us on today, God. I pray, God, that you will take my thoughts and my, my ideas and, God, you will place them in this word continually, God, that this word as it goes forth, God, will fall on fertile ground, God, and that this word will have conviction and power, God. I pray, God, for your people near and far that we learn to trust in you. Thank you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so now, uh, the book of Habakkuk challenges us here today. It's challenging us. Thank you, Ursh. Uh, keep watch, uh, Camille. The book challenges us to put our faith in God, even during the worst of times. Y'all hear what I'm saying? 
in the worst of times, he's challenging us. And when Abaka reached the end of his journey, he had moved from a place of doubting God to a place of trusting God, no matter what. Sometimes we got to say, no matter what, I'm going to trust God. And that no matter what was serious, and it was serious for him and his time, and it is serious in the time which we live right now. God revealed to Habakkuk was about to be invaded. It was going to be pilfered. Uh, they were going to come through. They were going to kill. They were going to ransack. They were going to rape the women, the girls. They were going to do all kinds of things. But Habakkuk had been warned by God. And so, and his people will lose everything. Everything that you work for, it was going to be gone. This is a whole different matter than trusting God, even though, say this, this morning or wherever, you got a speed ticket somewhere along the way, you already had a few on your record, and you just saw, God, what's going to happen? We're not talking about that kind of trusting God. We're talking about to lose everything. But God, the book of Habakkuk is challenging us to learn to trust no matter what. I don't care. Whether it be sickness, y'all, relationship, finances, careers, trust God. Mm. Let's, I'm going to put a question before you. If the United States, if we were told that the United States, I mean, quick, fast, and that everything was going to be wiped out, your homes, your jobs, they were going to burn. They were going to do the same thing that Habakkuk had been warned about. Could you still trust God? Or would you be running around trying to gather up everything you could gather and get you a little shelter somewhere, a little, uh, what they call it, fallout shelter, something like Some place that you could survive and kind of hide out. Or would you just trust God? You got to trust God. No matter. I don't care what it is. I'm not going to be before you long because uh, we talked about this yesterday. We're going to have a nice message. But, but God, but God brings us to some things that we got to discuss today. And so, so we're going to look at, I'm going to give you two points today, not three, but two. It's okay because it's the word of God. I know I got a pastor friend in the house and, and we know about the three points and all that, but sometimes God don't point you to three points. He may give you one. He may give you two. He may not. Just, he just say, preach your word and it'll fall where it fall. Well, y'all better catch up this morning. So now I'm trusting God. It's what Habakkuk is saying to us. And so, so the first point comes real quick. Wait patiently for God. Hallelujah. Wait patiently for God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, the first thing you got to do is wait patiently for God. Because now God, even when we are afraid, we got to learn to trust him. See, see, Habakkuk Look, look at verse 16 where Habakkuk writes, I heard and my heart pounded. In verse 16, he said, my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept in my bones and my legs trembled. He was a scared man. He was scared. It sounds like sometimes we've had the times when your hands just shake all over the place. And I'm trusting God, but things are so, I mean, so messed up that the Fear falls upon it. And, and we know that the word says we are not to be fearful. And we're not to be anxious for anything. But because we operate out of a human emotion, it all comes to play. Well. But God had told Habakkuk about this coming invasion and, and about the Babylonians. But God also described their arrogance, their violence, and the cruelty that these invaders were going to bring. He also told Habakkuk about the great and awesome judgments that he would bring upon the Babylonians and indeed how upon all the nations of the earth that refused to submit to God. See, now he's not just talking about them right there, but that still applies to today. All of us that disobey God, God has a repercussion for. Us. So Habakkuk may even have seen all of this in a vision. 
Stephen. Remember, he said, write, he told him to write it. Make it plain. Hallelujah. That those that would read it, basically he's saying they're going to understand it. Okay? So, and Habakkuk is terrified at what's going to happen and take place. As his heart is pounding in his chest, you know, have you ever heard your heart beat outside of your chest? Yes, that's, that's, that's a time of fear have crept in. But, but the fear factor multiplied probably a hundred times during this time that he was going through of his fear. And so what he wasn't just dealing with was a possibility of the attack on the country, but was a deathly afraid fear for even his very life too. Yeah, it was a physical level. How do you deal with extreme fear? Think about some things that have really shook your very foundation and how did you deal with it? Did you trust God? Did you wait patiently on God or did you try to fix it yourself? Well, what do you do when fear grips you in such a way that your heart is pounding and your hands are shaking and you're sweating all over the place? Do you truly trust God? Do you try positive thinking, meditating, deep breathing? Some people try all kinds of things. How do you exercise your faith in God today during your worst times? How do you exercise that mustard seed faith? If I held the mustard seed up this morning, you wouldn't even be able to see it. But the word tells us to have faith the size of a mustard. It doesn't take much and just trust God. Wait patiently for God. So, so Habakkuk says to wait patiently for God even when I'm afraid. And we look at the second half of verse six. He said, yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity. He going to wait on the trouble to come on to his front door, to come on and invade us. But God told Habakkuk that the Babylonians were going to invade. But he also said there was going to be no stopping that. It was going to happen. It's just like when you try to warn someone about a lifestyle or about sin and continue to live in a sin nature. You try to give them the warning signs and you try to plead with them because you see the impending problems of disobedience to God. You see the repercussions that are yet to follow, but they just don't hear you, right? But that's what Habakkuk was going through. He had been told and he knew what was yet to come, so he said, I'm just going to wait. We have to get to a time sometime when we've prayed everything we know to pray. We've cried before God. we stood and we've been patient. We just have to say, God, it's in your hands. I'm trusting you, God, and you just wait patiently and let God do what God do. Sometimes God got to reel some of them in with a neck, a noose around the neck almost. Sometimes he got to burn their very feet for them to run to him. But we wait patiently because we already see destruction all around. Y'all get what I'm saying? But the phrase wait patiently comes from a Hebrew word that means to rest. Hallelujah. Have you ever just sit down and just rest in the Lord? If you can find time to sit back and rest in the Lord, your worries, your fears, your doubts, your anxiety will just shift and move out of place because you're going to wait patiently on God. So basically what you're doing, you say, God, I'm going to succumb to your will. I am going to give up my will for your will. I'm going to wait patiently. Everything doesn't happen overnight. It's a process for some things in our lives. We see things impending and heading our way, but there is a process that we have to go through to get to the end results. So in this rest or settle down, it is the same word that we find in the Ten Commandments where God tells us to rest when? On the Sabbath day. What is the Sabbath? Our Sabbath is Sunday. But we take Sunday, we get so busy and doing so many things. We, we come to morning Bible, uh, Sunday school. We come to morning service. We leave. We have a 3 o'clock service. We have a 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. And we get so caught up in the Sabbath day of having services that we miss the point of the rest in the Lord. What I mean by that? Oh, yeah, we're going to come together and we're going to worship and we're going to fellowship God. But when we do that to the point where we are wearing and tiring out the people, 
or the preachers and the teachers that now it becomes redundant. It becomes, I'm tired of this. I just can't do church no more. Well, we had a two and a half year break. We had a rest time at the house, but now it's time to get back into the Sabbath mode and rest in the word of God and fellowship with one another and let us dwell together. Wait patiently for God, his direction. God promised to give you a peace when you give him your worries and your fears. How I know that? Because Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says that do not, and I repeat, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, who God, and with thanksgivings, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, whatever you thought you knew, you didn't know. But he will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, so, so when, 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 I, when I, I stop trying to fix it myself and I wait patiently for God and I rest in him and I trust him, guess what? He began to put the pieces of the puzzle together in our lives that whatever we're trying to do, he already got it worked out. He know the backstory. All we can see is right here. But God knows the whole story. Yeah, he wants us to rest in him. So then he gives us that peace. And it is the best trade-off to give my worries to someone that can handle it. To someone that can handle it. Because I'm just worried. Get your blood pressure jacked up. Your sugar level. Your cholesterol. Anxiety. Everything. You get mean and snap and evil and all this stuff. All that calamity. That's what Habakkuk was talking about. The calamity. We get all this calamity and energy going in ourselves. Because we are not resting and trusting in God. Rest. Wait patiently, y'all. Number two, choose to rejoice in God. Oh, yeah. Choose to rejoice in God, even when everything in life is going not the way that you desired it to go. Choose to rejoice. Even, you know what? Even in death, we can rejoice. Y'all understand me? Even when we lose a loved one, a dear friend or whatever, there is a rejoicing because now for one thing, if they died in Christ, we know that we can rejoice. Hallelujah. We know that if they died in Christ, that's our time to praise God, shout, hoop, holler, have a praise party because another one gone on to be with the Lord. But then we also have a time of praise because we know that yet though they are gone, hallelujah, if they, the dead die in Christ, guess what? They're going to be with Christ. But if I also live and dwell in Christ, guess what? That I'm also going to join them at one point in time. That I don't have to be miserable on this earth and then go to hell and be burnt and miserable for the rest of my days. There's a rejoicing time. Choose to rejoice in God. When troubles come knocking at your door, we don't want to, we don't want to answer the door. But what we have to know is that when troubles come, I've got a savior, I got a healer, I got a keeper, I got a provider. Every disease that come upon me may not be healed on this side, but when I leave here, Oh, the soul here, so the body don't even matter. But because God is so God, so good and awesome in his God and his self that I don't have to worry about it, I can rejoice. You know, you don't you don't begin to see your your your, your manifestation until you, until you get a peace about you. That's why you got to pray, Lord, give me your peace. I want your peace because when he gives you saying, take to do with it and that's when you in it oh yeah you rest in it so thessalonians 5 16 and then there's a second thing what i talked about you choosing to rejoice in god even when everything goes wrong though the fig tree does not bud y'all listen to this it does not bud there are no grapes on the vines and the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. 
Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Why? Because I trust him. Because he provided that. Hallelujah. And if that goes away, he has another something in store for me. He has something greater for you. See, see, you got to think about it. And it takes me back to Job. That Even though Job went through all of what Job went through, Job executed patience with God. Job executed rejoicing. Through all his trials, his tribulations, through losing wife, children, family, home, all his earthly goods. But he was patient and waited on God. He rejoiced even when his friends came to tell him, you need to curse God and die. Job was patient. And then we know the story that God, with his good self, came on up in the end and restored to him better than what he had before. So I'm going to say to you all, wait on the Lord. Trust God. Whatever you planted and you've been waiting for the harvest, keep waiting. Because if you are surely in the word of God and you are surely a believer, if you're surely a sold out servant of God, you don't have to announce it. You don't have to broadcast it. You just walk it out. You just live the life. And you live the life for God and not for mankind. See, that's where we mess up. We live a life for men and women to see. We live a life to be on some type of uh, billboard or something. You know, like the movie stars. We want our names up. But let me tell you something. The most humble servant that walks diligently, faithfully, trusting God, having the patience and the assurance and rejoicing in God are the ones that come out. What do you say? And the last shall be first. Oh, we saw some lasts. We saw some counted outers. We saw some that they said they would never do this or they won't ever be there. We've seen that in our lives. We've even experienced that in our lives. But look at God. Look what God can do. God can take. It's not about having all this property. You can have a hundred, two, three, five hundred acres, acres of land. Mansions sitting in beautiful estates, golf course, all type of servants, and still be miserable. Happy and alone, right there. But then you take the man, got a little ranch house, got a family that love him, wife got a husband to treat her right, love him, love the Lord. Because see, now that's the key. Loving the Lord first and foremost. Well, Innate be in you. That'll cause you to love everyone else. Treat everyone else with a kind heart and a kind tongue. And, and, and so you're waiting on God. And so you can wake up in the morning and rejoice. You can wake up in the morning with patience. You can wake up in the morning with peace because you allow God to order your steps. Don't understand me that there, there are going to be days when you're going to be challenged and you're going to have trials and you're going to have tribulations. And you're going to sit back and scratch your head and wonder, well, God, did you really tell me this? Am I really supposed to be doing it? Or should I have done that? You remember when I said that should have, could have, would have last week? You're going to have all that stuff going on because that's our emotional side. But when you get to that spiritual side and you say, God, it looked like this and it smelled like that and it sound like that. But God, I'm going to trust you. Through it all, God, whatever you got for me, I know you got to give me the patience to wait on it. Let me rejoice in the midst of my storm because I know that I know that you are God of a second chance. You are God that hears my cry. You are God that will never leave me. You are God that will never forsake me. Hallelujah. And through all the storms, whoo, Jesus, all the trials, I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to trust you with my family. Because guess what? A woman carries a baby for about nine months. But once that baby leaves that womb, you see it, you smell it, you bathe it, you feed it. But there's going to come a day when 
you won't know where he or she is because as they grow up, they grow out. So now what you got to do is trust God. You got to trust God. Uh huh. You got to trust God because that that was, was attached to you. It became a part of you for a long time. And that's why mothers have the intuition that no matter where their children may be, if they're in trouble, be sickness, be whatever, be people after them, what, whatever it is, that, 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 that satanic vibe, that mother's instinct will grab hold of it and she want to call them or she want to pray for them. God gives us that same instinct when it comes to the Holy Ghost. That, that, that when we have that attachment, that spirit abiding and dwelling on the inside, that, that when we are going through, our Father knows what we have need of, and he comes to our rescue. How about that? He will come to us even when we don't see it. He's already working it out. He's placing people in strategic places to do what we need to be done on this side because we trusted him for everything. Everything. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that today, God, that for everything, we're going to trust you, God. We're going to wait patiently for you, Lord, and we're going to rejoice in it as we know, God, that you are always with us. You never leave us, nor do you forsake us, God. And we just want to give you glory right now, God. We want to rest in your Holy Spirit and rest in your care, God, that you wrap us up like a mother wraps a baby in her arms, God, and you care for us all the days of our lives. Whether we see it, whether we rejoice in it, or whether we give you praise, God, you are God, and we just love you for what you do, God. I pray right now, God, for those that are in this congregation and those that are online, Lord, that whatever they have need of today, God, oh, God, salvation. Oh, God, those that are not saved, that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, God, that you will seek them, Lord, like never before, God, that you will chase them down, God, and even that bring deliverance to their soul, Lord Jesus. Those that are going through from sickness and all kinds of disarray, God, I pray, God, right now for a powerful healing in their lives, a powerful healing in their mind, their body, and their soul, God. And you sustain them, God. Through their difficult times, God. And I pray, God, for those that are making decisions and have decisions to be made and have to make shifts in their lives, God, that you already worked it out, Lord Jesus. God, I pray, God, that the fellowship of love and peace, God, will fall upon them, God, that they will rejoice in it, God, that, that to know that whatever they decided, God, you guided them to the decision, God, and because you guided them, God, that favor is upon them right now, God, that, that the protection of peace, God, will surpass all understanding that they won't even understand God but you know their hearts God I pray God now for couples right now Lord Lord couples that are standing in the gap for one another and couples that have been on here a long time God fighting for you calling your name claiming a victory God I pray right now God that you will strengthen them God give them the endowment God of the Holy Spirit greater than ever before, that the Holy Spirit will keep their mind, their very mind, God, their very heart, God, their cries and plead to you, God. Give peace, God. Oh, God, give joy, God. I pray, God, that your holy anointing right now will saturate this entire building, God, with your people. God, the women in this building, the men, the children, saturate them like never, never before, God. That your Holy Spirit will rest on the minds, God. It is okay. It's okay to follow what God has ordered. It's okay to follow the path that's which he's leading you on. It is okay. I see you. I know you. I created you. I will be with you. Even until the ends of this earth, God is with you. Even when there are nights and you don't know if you made the right decision, God is with you. God is going to supply every need that you have. Every need that you have according to his riches and glory. Hallelujah. It may be some desires and so on, but God will supply every need. You will not go lacking. You will not run short. Your barrel will never be empty. 
Stay in my word. Stay committed to the cross. Stay committed to the finished work that my son Jesus done at Calvary's cross for all of us. It was in Jesus' name that I pray. I declare and I decree that God is doing a different thing, but he's doing the right thing. Let's trust him. He's doing a different thing, but he's doing a right thing. Trust him. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Y'all just lift your hands if you're not. Just, just wave one or two times for the presence of the Lord in his presence. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your anointing, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. This song has special meaning for somebody in this place today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The tears from your eyes gonna be alright. Yeah, it's gonna be alright. Yes, gonna be alright. Give God a hand of praise. Amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory. Thank you all. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. To our online viewers, we thank you for being with us here today. Next Sunday is our fifth Sunday. We will not be in session. So online, join us back first Sunday in June at 10 a.m. God bless you all. Heaven smile upon you. And for our online viewers, dear God, as they leave this service, but not your fellowship or your peace, God, I ask you to continue to be with them, that your Holy Spirit abide in them. Now, henceforth, and for everyone, all of you online viewers, just say amen, amen, and amen. Amen.